Extreme weather is often a story of very strong, conflicting winds. But in 1993, a particularly unusual mix of these winds started a storm that became the worst in living history. Early March in Atlanta, Georgia, is a time of year when people are looking forward to summer. But that year, the city, which seldom has snow, was hit by a blizzard of polar proportions. It came right in the middle of what had started as a normal spring day. People were stranded in offices. Some who tried to get home were marooned on the freeway. People froze in their homes when power failed. The blizzard raced northwards up the coast, hitting New York with gale force winds that blew windows out of skyscrapers. The storm, which dropped 40 million tons of snow over a 2,000 mile stretch, even caught forecasters by surprise. Predicting precipitation is possible, but forecasting what will hit the ground is not. The air above the earth doesn't necessarily have the same temperature profile. You can have bands of areas in the atmosphere going up above the ground that are different. So you might have a very cold layer at the surface. You might then find you've got a warmer layer above that. Any precipitation falling out of that will melt in that warmer layer and then as it comes down into the colder layer again, actually begin to freeze again. And it depends exactly when that happens as to what you find falling at the surface. Rain will freeze into sleet during a long journey in cold air, and snow falling through cold air onto cold ground will settle as snow. Ice storms are the treacherous result of rain falling onto very cold ground. Large droplets spread out on impact before freezing, coating surfaces with clear ice known as glaze. Ice storms are storms of attrition. This one built up over two weeks, gradually encasing everything in heavy, stubborn, deadening ice. Trees collapsed under the sheer weight. Power cables froze, their poles broken. Houses had no light or heat. But what could anybody have done about a storm as bad as this? The answer has remained the same throughout time. The most you can do about the weather is to try to predict it. Many of these instruments are unchanged from the 17th century. In their day, they turned weather recording from an art into science. These instruments that could record a day's temperature the length of time the sun shines, or the strength of the wind, couldn't make forecasts on their own. But from their accurate measurements, forecasters could eventually show trends, and then, from that, make predictions. A much later generation of instruments on weather buoys and weather balloons can give daily readings and tell a lot more about impending storms and the places they're likely to hit. Since the 1970s, there have been weather satellites. They can see the weather as a whole moving across the planet. Today, there is no chance that a hurricane can strike completely by surprise because of the satellites scanning large areas of weather. The limit of the prediction time for forecasters using them is three or four days. 
But now there's something even newer, although a lot about it looks distinctly last generation. It looks, in fact, like a model airplane. But it's actually a robot. It's called an aerosonde, and it could be the biggest advance in weather science since Galileo's thermometer in 1600. It's a simple enough machine powered by a gasoline engine, but an engine that can keep it flying for up to four days. And it can go anywhere. It carries miniaturized weather sensors, is piloted by a satellite-linked computer, and flies wherever weathermen want it to fly, no matter how remote or turbulent, sending back every meteorological detail. It has already inspected hurricanes and tornado-generating thunderstorms. One of its inventors is Greg Holland. We flew into a severe thunderstorm which had a downdraft and very intense winds which would brought a normal aircraft out of the air. It kept on flying. Its accelerations were nine times the force of gravity. Now that would actually kill most people and the aircraft kept on flying. It has also done a non-stop flight across the Atlantic on a gallon and a half of gas. Details about its own performance is part of the information the Aerosan sends back. With that, operators can make sure it keeps flying. Ultimately, the idea is to send up aerosons by the fleet, transmitting such a totality of information to weather computers that every possible storm in the world can be analyzed. But what the current weather forecast models are able to do is tell us where they need the observations. Unfortunately, they're over the oceans of the Arctic. Four-fifths of the planet is where the observations are needed and there's nothing out there that can take the relevant observations. Imagine two or three thousand aerosons up in the air being deployed to those areas and bringing back the observations and suddenly we have a quantum leap in the weather forecasting capacity. Two or three thousand aerosons gathering very detailed weather information could finally break that three-day barrier in the human ability to predict weather, and of course, extreme weather. Someday it might be possible to know a hurricane or tornado is coming and where it will hit a week or two ahead. Then people could really get ready for it. No panicky fleeing or hiding in the cellar while the house blows away. But even so, even with all the new technology, there still won't be any way of stopping the hurricane. This is not to say, though, that humans haven't already affected the weather. Global warming may mean more violent storms. There's the potential for climate change to make our weather far more extreme. We certainly could see more thunderstorms forming in the future. We could see from that more tornadoes being spawned as well. And we could see more hurricanes forming. It's all quite speculative at the moment, but it certainly does look that our climate is going to be having quite a significant effect on our day-to-day -day weather as well. Despite the best predictions, weather disasters will continue to happen, whatever humans do. The earth is the domain of the sun, the air, the water. There's only one thing we can ever do about weather. Try to be ready.